Hello and welcome everyone. We are excited to teach you about the new and exciting updates we've made to ForeFlight to bring you safety enhancing hazard awareness tools. Today, you will learn how ForeFlight's extensive collection of in-flight hazard awareness features can improve your safety of flight around terrain, obstacles, and difficult weather. We will show you how to make the most of synthetic vision, reported turbulence, and 3D obstacles to bolster your situational awareness to plan smoother and safer flights. If you are looking for more in-depth education about the app, you can always reference the pilot's guide in the documents section of ForeFlight. We also have an extensive video library on our website and you can search it by keyword. We have a fantastic pilot support team as well and you can email them anytime at team at foreflight.com. And you can also ask us your questions today by using the Zoom Q&A panel during today's webinar. Our team is standing by to answer your questions and we will take a few of the more popular questions toward the end. We tend to get more questions at the end of our webinars, so we encourage you to ask your question as soon as you think of it. With that, let's meet our presenters. Guys, introduce yourselves. I'm Atlas. I'm on the Four Flight Labs team up here in Northwestern Maine. I'm a private pilot, uh, instrument, tailwheel, seaplane pilot, all the fun stuff. I'm Dave. I'm based out of Fort Collins. I've been with Four Flight about three years now. I manage two of the, the teams on the personal aviation tower having to do with general aviation. Been flying for quite a while, uh, I think since the mid nineties or so, I have my uh, my private pilot, my instrument rating, as well as my fault plane rating. My name is Keith Wagner. I am a private pilot working on my instrument rating in Seattle, Washington, and I am on Four Flight's marketing team. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available within 24 hours of the conclusion of our webinar. Let's jump right into today's content, Dave. You have the controls. Okay, so one of the flights that I do quite a bit in the summer being based in Fort Collins is uh, from Fort Collins to the, the Telluride Airport, um, which at least for me and the you know piston singles that I fly is not something that I could, could do directly. So just to show you um, how helpful our hazard advisor can be for flight planning, I've entered this route. So here we have uh, Fort Collins directly you know, going into Telluride, it's showing about 202 nautical miles. But of course, this is something that because of the, the mountainous terrain that we have here, I really wouldn't just do a straight route to get there. So now what I can do is go into four flight, turn on our hazard advisor, and really quickly just kind of toggle the altitude, slide it here, and I can see where I'm going to have problems with clearance. If I want to go around 14.5, which is really my goal. I'd probably do this flight about 14.5, drop it a little lower just to show some of the mountains here. But what I can do real easily is just go in and create some intermediate waypoints and kind of pick my way um, through the mountainous terrain in a way that will actually yield a lot of terrain clearance. So here I've added one right before Rollins Pass and then over to uh, the Kremlin VOR. There's another one that I, I typically hit, which is the Eagle VOR right by, actually I guess it's called the Snow VOR by the Eagle Airport. And as I'm doing this, what I can do is kind of drop this altitude slider down. It's at 12,000, 11,000. I can see how that, that route that I gave you know, it's going to even at 13.5, which is a thousand feet below my intended altitude, still going to provide clearance in there. To continue on to on into Telluride, there's another um, basically big mountain right in the path coming into it. So I'm just going to drag my route and go to this cones VOR. That's actually one of the points on the instrument approach into Telluride as well. I, I tend to just fly an instrument approach into there. Um, even if I am flying VFR, just to kind of have a little bit more precision and awareness of where I'm where I'm at. Um, so now you can see with that entire altitude or entire route planned on the 2D map, you know, it looks like we have a good obstacle clearance through everything. 
when I pick my 14.5 altitude that I intend to fly, you can see that there aren't, aren't even any cautions. I'm at least a um, thousand feet above everything. Just to verify that now, when I go into the profile view, you can see that I also have um, complete clearance along my entire route without, without flying through any mountains, which is just something we uh, definitely like to avoid. Another new feature that, um, that we recently launched is something that we call reported turbulence. And you can see this both in the, in the profile view here. You see the yellow dots that are along my route. Um, we get a lot of turbulence along the front range. And so this, these observed turbulence reports are actually depicted in the profile view. I can um, scroll in on them, zoom, pan around. They're also on the 2D map. And when I go into the 2D map to look at these, uh, let me turn them on here. Should get some reported turbulence. Now that we're on the uh, 2D map, we can see the reported turbulence here. We also have an altitude slider, so I could slide this altitude and, and look at turbulence reports at various altitudes. And if I want more details on these, I can click on one of these reports here, like this little yellow one I'll try to hit. That actually brings up something showing the specific altitude, um, the weight category of the, of the aircraft that measured it was used to measure this turbulence as well as the airspeed, other nearby reports, and it shows you, you know, everything about them from um, light, moderate, severe, extreme. Another thing that's really, I think, kind of neat about this is we also show um, smooth air. So you can actually look at different parts of the country and you can see they would be depicted with a gray dot, but you'd see that we actually had recorded fairly current observations of people flying in smooth air. So rather than just recording kind of the stuff to avoid, we also depict the smooth air, which gives you a good idea of the kind of the vast coverage that we have with our reported turbulence layer just because of the, the sheer number of users that we have using for flight mobile. One of my favorite new features we've released and uh, looks like you're going to have light to moderate ride getting out of Fort Collins, but all in all, pretty smooth trip down south. Yep. And this is a feature that is included in our Pro Plus and Performance Plus subscription tiers for users that have bought a Century or a Century Plus. If you don't have one of those, those devices, it's also available as an individual add-on. One of the other things that I like to do in for flight before I go on a, a flight over mountainous terrain is view our uh, wind speed layer. This is really nice because it gives you just a really quick graphical depiction of what the wind's doing at various altitudes. I'm not going to want to go over a high mountain pass when I have, say, a 40 knot, um, you know, wind ripping over that pass and you know, a situation that could lead to uh, mountain waves. So when you turn on this layer here on the on the right, we have our altitude selector. And once again, we can tailor the wind speeds, actually view them at that specific altitude. If I just bring this down to um, 14,000, which is roughly the route that I had planned, um, I can get a pretty pretty clear depiction. It looks like about a 20 knot wind in most of the areas. That's kind of, at least for me in a small piston plane, kind of about, about all I'm really willing to do going over kind of crazy terrain, anything more than that. And um, you can get, you know, a lot of lifting and, you know, dom drafts that could potentially exceed the capabilities of your airplane. A cool thing, Dave, is if you hold on the map anywhere, you can get a, a numerical readout. Uh, yeah, let me show that really quickly. Just tap on, oh, let's just, this is a uh, Rollins Pass, but just tap and hold on there. Then we can see really quickly. Um, 229 at 25 knots. Cool. So right around your limit, looks like. Yeah, pretty, pretty close. Looks like you planned a pretty good flight, Dave. Are you concerned at all about clouds or icing? So that's always something I'm going to be looking at, um, you know, particularly in, in the winter for the icing layer. Um, so if we go into our uh, profile view once again here. There's a couple of really cool layers that are in our Performance Plus subscription tier that are just super helpful for that. If I go into my layer selector in the profile view, first we'll pick the icing layer. And you can see 
Um, nothing that's really going to give me problems here, but it looks like up around 17 or 18,000, there is some potential icing early on in my route. And then to go into the cloud layer, um, you can see there actually are some clouds there, as you would expect as well. So this is just something that gives you a really, really nice depiction vertically where you're at. Are you above? Are you below the clouds? You know, are you going to possibly box yourself in? Um, these are also both available in flight as long as you have remembered to hit the pack button and, and pack for your flight. As I mentioned, I use Hazard Advisor quite a bit being in the, the Front Range area in Colorado. Um, Atlas, another four flight member here, also tends to use it a lot and he can kind of show you what he uses it for in his area. Yeah, Dave, this is a flight I do pretty often here from upstate New York to Western Maine. And just like your flight to Telluride, we head into the profile view, we can see not really ideal to go direct. So again, I'll turn on the hazard advisor layer and I'll just touch plan to get around those mountains. Something like that looks like it'll work. That's a bit better. And maybe I'll update my planned altitude to 4,500. So we'll go with that for now. A neat feature I use a fair bit is the 3D view. So if you tap an airport and hit this 3D view button, you can actually get a preview of what that approach might be like. So here I'll be coming in from the southwest, got the mountains to my south here. And if I were coming in at night, a little preview of that. Pretty sweet. You might actually see there's obstacles depicted in this layer as well. So there's a little red lit tower, another one here. I know we've got some windmills in the distance. So I can give you a good eyes on as to what you might be seeing as you arrive here in Western Maine in the middle of the night. Something cool we can do is that 3D view anywhere. So let's find a nice little mountaintop here, some towers that are interesting to me. If I just hold, I can hit 3D. We're going to load the terrain and see some of those mountainous regions off to my west as I fly along my planned route of flight. You can zoom in and out, get a good sense of what's going on. Actually, let's find a few towers. So if I use profile corridor and bring my slider down, we can see that towers will begin to shade within my route of flight. This looks like a big a uh, little collection here. So maybe I'll touch again and get a 3D preview here, see if any of those show up. Oh yeah, there they are. See them around the airport in the distance. Not too tall, not a problem for my flight. One more 3D thing we can do is hit this magical little globe and we'll actually get a full 3D preview of our entire flight. This is a really powerful tool, especially if you aren't familiar with the area you're going into, just wanted to get another set of eyes. We have some different layers we can turn on, like icing. Probably not going to see much of that on the East Coast today. Turbulence might be some there. Yeah, looks like we have some at the surface. I can use this slider to scrub through it. And we can pan down on the bottom and see our route of flight. So it looks like we'll, after around 25 minutes, we'll be out of that light turbulence and we'll be cruising along up to Eastern slopes, which is where we decided to start our turn to keep us away from this mountain range here. There's Mount Washington. Well, it looks quite pretty up here. I'm looking forward to this flight. And uh, we'll duck on in here over the lakes. There's that mountain we saw in 3D view earlier. And there's our arrival into Rangeley. So that's a great way to get early eyes on an unfamiliar area. So we demoed how we could view 3D preview on the ground, but we can actually use synthetic vision to get a similar look in flight. 
I tap up here and turn on SV, you can see, here we are, cruising along. 461 knots, holy smokes, that's pretty fast for a uh, 172, but this is just using our in-app simulator, so we'll disregard that for now. And uh, here we are, 4,300 feet. We can actually look around as we come by the lakes. 40 Mike Echo Airport, we could see obstacles down there. Zoom in with our laser eyes. And some nice information up top. So it looks like we're 57 minutes out. It's a beautiful day. Calm ride on a well-planned route up to Rangeley, Maine. Another thing I, I think um... It's pretty neat about synthetic vision is it also shows ADS-B traffic targets in SV when you're flying. Well, traffic isn't exactly terrain, but it's equally unfun to hit. So, Dave, why don't you give us a quick look at uh, ADS-B traffic? Sure. So, you can see here by where my, my dot is on the map, I live just a little bit northwest of the, the Fort Collins Airport. I happen to have a live... Uh, Country Plus on my on a sucking cup on the window in the back of my house. So this is actually showing us live ADSB targets. One of the things that typically happens to me, this is a very busy airport. And if I'm coming into it in the afternoon after a long flight, you see some traffic. It may not be obvious if these people are in the pattern and you're just kind of wondering, will they still be there when I get there? Am I going to have a tough time sequencing myself in? Um, we added several months ago, uh, the ability to actually tap on a target and you can see there I tapped on 522 November Delta and I can see that this is very likely someone that's just flying in the pattern and will probably continue to do that um, so it's really neat you tap on the target and it shows you their recent history then you tap on this little information window to get rid of it and then you can you know tap on other ones to switch and view their information so just Super neat way to kind of um, get a little bit more of a graphical depiction of what people are up to. Yep, so one of the things that's depicted here is the relative altitude of these targets. So that uh, 522 November Delta again, plus four, that now plus three, that means they're actually 300 feet above me. Um, so you just have to add two zeros and you can give a relative altitude, um, giving you a good idea. Particularly if in the air is a target that I'm going to have a problem with and that I need to avoid or not. Another really powerful feature of Four Flight Mobile is that we issue various safety oriented alerts when you're in flight. For example, if I was in flight and I was flying directly towards the path of one of these airplanes, a pop up would appear telling me that there was traffic. It would give the direction and the altitude of the traffic. Another thing that I like to really stress with our users is the importance of if you happen to have a Bluetooth headset, it's just a really good idea to pair that with your iPad or your iPhone if that's where you're running for flight mobile. If you do happen to have a Bluetooth headset and it's paired, you'll actually get an audio alert as well in a spoken voice. Um, so it's just really neat if you don't happen to be looking at for flight, you can still get um, you know very timely safety oriented alerts through your Bluetooth headset. Another alert that we are able to issue within ForeFlight is an airspace alert when you're approaching airspace. And I'll hand it over to Atlas who can show that to you. Well, Dave, like you mentioned, there's the audio alerts. There's also these nice pop-ups in ForeFlight Mobile here. So we're cruising along, heading towards Bangor. We should see any moment now an alert pop up informing us that we are about to enter their airspace. So let's hope we gave them a call and got clearance beforehand. All right, here we go. Bangor, Class Charlie below in 17.1 nautical miles. So this is showing us, you can see the uh, floor of that Charlie airspace, looks like 1500 MSL and the ceiling 4,200. It also gives us the approach frequency 118.92. And uh, now seems like a good time to tune that in, give them a call and get clearance to enter that, Charlie. Well, Dave, that was a demo on airspace alerts. We got a cool new one this month, which is wake turbulence alerts. Do you think you'll be able to demo one of those? Yeah, we can talk about that a little bit, Atlas. Um, one of the foundational things that we had to implement when we built that traffic breadcrumbs, which you know let you click on your targets and shows you where they've been, 
is the ability to basically in real time have uh, four flight track recent history for everything that it's receiving via ADSB um, within a given a given location. So after we released that feature, um, we just started thinking a lot about what else we could do with it. And one of the things that came up was the possibility of detecting wake turbulence and providing pilots in flight with warning before they would encounter uh, the wake from another aircraft. This feature is available in both our Pro Plus and our Performance Plus subscription tiers. Thank you, Dave and Atlas, for walking through ForeFlight's hazard awareness tools. Before we get to everyone's questions, I want to point out a few useful links. These links offer resources for you, including many of the things that we didn't have time to cover today. If you are looking for more in-depth education about the app, you can always reference the pilot's guide in the documents section of ForeFlight. We also have an extensive video library on our website, and you can search it by keyword. Check out foreflight.com slash webinars. There you can watch some of our past webinars, including those on weather in foreflight, planning and filing flight plans within foreflight, and much more. Lastly, our fantastic pilot support team is happy to answer your questions. You can reach them anytime by emailing team at foreflight.com. With that, let's move on to some of your questions. Dave, first question is for you. One of the viewers loves seeing the 3D airport preview. Uh, can you demo uh, a few more airports for us? Sure, I can do that. Um, let me jump in here and I'll, I'll first show you an airport that I go into quite a bit. Every summer I tend to fly there. I'm from, from Michigan originally. So this is the KTVC, which is the Traverse City, Michigan airport. If I go in and look at 3D view on here, you can see it's kind of a neat one to look at just because it's surrounded by water. Um, you know, four different runways there. So you can actually get um, a perspective depending upon which runway you're going into just by touching on the runway number. So I'll look at runway 10, you know, and that's gonna, gonna put us right there, three, six, um, two, eight, whatever you might wanna do. Uh, and you can also see that obstacles are depicted within this view. So you can get a good idea what types of things might cause you trouble going into it. And then um, because we're aware of the different lighting systems at these airports, we have the ability just to go into um, night mode and actually have an an animated view showing you exactly what that would look like coming into at night. So really nice if you're going into a maybe an unfamiliar airport and you just like to have a little bit more situational awareness before you encounter it coming in during flight. Um, another thing that we can do is if I go to my maps tab, going into this same airport, I have now um, selected through the procedure um, selection, a traffic pattern entry into Traverse City where I'm going into runway 18. Um, and so you can actually preview that as well when we go into our route preview. Coming into Traverse City here, it's kind of loading up terrain. And you can see an entry, uh, I think it's a, actually a downwind entry into runway 18 at Traverse City. Very cool. That's uh, definitely very handy to see. Uh, and I saw you're going over quite a bit of water there. So uh, uh, I, I know this is just kind of a simulation, but best of luck. Uh, I know that's a lot. And I know you're going to be doing that cross country soon, which I'll ask you about in just a moment here. But first, I want to throw it over to Atlas for a second. Uh, we just released a new feature that shows power lines on the aeronautical layer. Uh, can you show us a, a little bit about those? Yeah, these are awesome. So Aeronautical air, if you don't have that on top left here, you can toggle that. And as I begin to zoom in, you'll see some red lines. These are actually power lines now depicted on the aeronautical map. If I turn on the aerial layer, you can see where those lines are. But much easier to make them out from a distance using the aeronautical layer now. This is super helpful if you're coming into the water, as David and I might be doing. Beautiful summer day. Uh, take a look at these. They're actually crossing the river here. So 
nice from a pre-flight standpoint to have a look. I guess you wouldn't want to hit this bridge anyway, but the um, new aeronautical layers power line display is awesome. Exactly. And we've uh, heard a lot of feedback from uh, rotor and helicopter pilots that are very happy to have this feature, especially for the low level that they might be doing. Uh, so it's one of those really great situational safety enhancing situational awareness tools that we're, we're proud to uh, include in the app. Uh, and Dave, coming back to you now, uh, you know, you're talking about that long cross country flight. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you're going to avoid some of that special use airspace or any TFRs that might pop up uh, along your route of flight. Yeah, so we've made a few changes um, to filtering for our aeronautical layer um, recently. You see here we have this selector where right now I'm on the VFR layer. Um, and I could do high IFR, low IFR, or VFR. Then within each one of those layers, you have this little menu and the three dots at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just go in here and you can you can look at your various um, special use airspace um, classifications. So if I just make sure I'm here turning on MOAs and there's some other things, um, prohibited and restricted, different airspaces that you can turn on and off. Then after doing that, you can go, go right in here and actually see, um, like this will be an MOA showing you the Volk Falls MOA, uh, 500 to 17,999. Um, and you can click on it for the, for the details as well as just to depict it and make sure it's highlighting the one that you think you're on. Um, let's see, PFRs are a little bit different. We will make, turn that on as a, as a map layer and see if we can find one here. Yeah, it looks like there's one um, just south of the, the Leadville airport. If I touch on that, it'll give the details um, for that specific TFR. So active surface to 14.5 along with the, the date and time up at the top. So real easy just to kind of scrub through your route after turning things on and see what you're going to encounter. This is one I run into quite a bit where I, I would probably tend to just avoid that um, that O'Neill airspace um, just because it's going to add about 10 seconds to my flight to do that. So why, why take the chance? Yeah, exactly. That's great to great to demonstrate. And thank you for sharing with that with us, especially those TFRs. They can pop up so much here during the summertime around wildfire season. Uh, we want to make sure that anybody fighting those fires are going to, you know, we can stay well clear of that airspace and staying away from uh, any of those other TFRs that might pop up. So thanks for thanks for demoing that. Um, and with that, I did want to bring us to a close today. Uh, I want to thank our presenters for taking the time to be here, as well as the four flight staff working behind the scenes to bring us this webinar and answer your written questions. Lastly, I want to thank you for joining today's webinar. This webinar was recorded and will be available on our website and YouTube channel within the next 24 hours. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, please send them to team at fourflight.com. Until next time, safe and happy flying, everyone.